Hello. And we're live. Yes. And we're live with Haley and the fantastic modern art behind her. <laughs> right. And we will be going through these bullet points in the INTJ. Look at those lovely bullet points, folks, now. But first, let's sell something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got here, we've got some lines from my stage play. And what you can do, folks, is I will not waste time going through these lines, but you can pause it and read them. Although, that thing about the underpants right there. And another thing, you wearing two pairs of underpants at the same time does not speak well of your confidence level. The US is not a two pairs of underpants type of country. Or we're bold. That's Wilma. <laughs> She's a little bit assertive. <laughs> Right, so, so Haley, I can ask you, you went through this play with me, what did you think of it? Yeah, well, um, I really liked it. I was a little confused at first, but once we started getting into it more and more, um, I, like, I, I really liked it more. Um, just because of the way I am, I liked a lot some of the little sexual jokes in there. I just thought they were hilarious. <laughs> So I guess it might take a certain type of audience uh, to not yes. get offended. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I was thinking of toning that down because, like, this is the back cover. <laughs> I was thinking of maybe not putting those on the back cover. But so, folks, we are now going to move on to the Model G. Oh, no. I've forgotten to – there's a particular diagram I need to show. But what I will do is, while I am finding this diagram, I will put Haley on screen. There you go, folks. Your typical INTJ. Oh, but actually, Haley is the typical INTJ inside. Inside, she ticks all of the boxes of the INTJ mind. And I would actually say that on the outside, it's an example of the, the INTJ that um, can look like their jewel as well. I mean, if you had, if you have people suggest, you know, these people in, um, forums and people who leave comments have they ever gone oh she thinks she's an INCJ she's an ESFP and things like that all the time I mean I've, I've probably gotten every single type every single type yeah but the reason why I did this folks is that I have got uh, there's a particular diagram the model G diagram which does the overall explanation I'm just moving it across into the uh, folder and now I'll go back. Uh, now I've got to switch the screen to uh, me. And then away from the, uh, so this one. And then I'll go to, I think this should be it here. That's it, Model G explanation. And so today, because I know we've got a smart audience, we've got INTJs and INTPs, and generally subscribers to my channel are smart. Right, here we go. Uh, generally. Yeah, generally, <laughs> generally, I, I'm not prepared to go the whole the whole hog, but I will say you know, <laughs> most, nearly all, right, most. right. Um, but anyway, okay. so we have here. So we are talking about the management function, the lead function. So in model G. Okay, well you're gonna have to zoom it in. You're gonna have to zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, so can you see it? Oh, right, gotcha, right. Uh, so what I want to do, so in Model G, the management function, uh, I'm going to explain about the externalities and the maximum energy, and then I'll go through these bullet points, and then I'll explain a little bit about the tote model, and then we'll get onto the bullet points, and then okay. we'll put a little bit more theory. So Model G is divided, and of course, and because this is the first video that people will be watching in the series, Model G is divided in, into energy, uh, energy across, and uh, externalities, internalities down. Now, externalities, internalities is quite difficult to understand. And so I've, you know, getting various bits of information from Dr. G and thinking about it myself and how best to articulate it. I think it's best to think about it as scope of use. So, for instance, uh, 
INTJs have strong, so that's the ILI, the critic and socionics, have strong TE, but its scope of use is usually uh, narrower than, say, in an ENTJ. Because the ENTJ is more out there in the world, like, sort of like enacting. You know, it's, you know what I mean? Like they're pushing their agenda forward more, being more extroverted, more. Right. Yeah. And with the INTJ, they sort of focus their TE on a certain goal. So it's like it's on its territory. Uh, whereas the externalities are things which have like a wider scope of use because it's like, and even Dario Nardi said that um, in his book, Eight Keys to Self-Leadership, that introverts overall recorded greater comfort with all of their introverted functions and their extroverted functions. And it's the same for extroverts. They recall greater comfort for all of their extroverted uh, functions. So, for instance, you can see with, uh, with Haley working on her body and the modeling and the things like that, and other things that she's displayed where she has strong access to the socionics SI, the, the comfort sensing, th those kind of introverted sensing things, which is, and I like to use the Jungian definition of SI, which is like, it's subjective sensing. It's the internal subjective experience. So, uh, a lot of introverts are going to access this function because a lot of introverts do a lot of reading. And a lot of things that are described in when you read something are, are if anything concrete is described, those concrete things are going to come from someone's memory. And so memory is very much associated with the subjective uh, sensor. Uh, what, 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 what we got? And then the, the role function being TI, and again, TI is used a heck of a lot by INTJs. You INTJs listen to this, you, you use TI as you destroy people in arguments, trying to find faults in their logic. <laughs> and they use TI when, um, and they use TI when, uh, what else? And they use and they use TI in conjunction with NI when they're like building the master plan or have a feeling of how things are going. And we'll look at that more later on. And then you've got the FI where the subjective feelings of uh, the INTJ. So you can see how all four of those processes have a wide scope of use within the INTJ because they're overall introverted, they're going to be using those four functions a lot. And they're going to, and they're going to be using, uh, they're not going to be using any a lot because the any contradicts the NI, because the NI is focusing usually on one goal and the NI is other possibilities and options that contradict that. But it is something that they will think about and not try to ignore. We'll push to one side and then the FE break because they're the most introverted of the types we won't do much FE uh, what else extroverted sensor is that they'll, they'll, they'll be drawn to the extroverted sensor uh, but that a bit again the extroverted sensor and that's an example of something that has a smaller scope of use they're not doing it all the while like the SE DOMS where they, they have a larger scope of use for that function. So as we see here, folks, uh, so I will ask Haley some. So, so we've got here, so we've got externalities quartet activated by external stimulation of the function uh, in the launcher, launcher position. Also, this is something from Victor where he thinks that uh, he thinks that INTJ is activated by FI. So, for example, uh, he thinks that they would be activated by a principle. And I would say that you are a principled person. So, for instance, in your, with all these things about fitness, Haley, what would you say your principle, I know we're getting a little bit off the line from NI, but what would you say your operating principle is in so, 
like that sort of drives you along like because you're not happy with these big box gyms are you and, and people yeah no not at all and so it's like you do feel like there's like a, a purpose a drive from the inside a principle that sort of um well yes um actually got into fitness uh, I, I wouldn't say I would say basically I'm just selfish and I wanted a better body but <laughs> also along the lines I was like well uh, how can I try and monetize this and when I learned more and more about uh, box gyms and the NASM system and just everything they implement it's yeah it just disappointed me and um, I won't promote any of that bullshit especially you know for a paycheck I'm sorry I won't do it and so I understand what Dr. G said. And also, did Dario Nardi once, I think, uh, and what, something we watched from him um, said that the FI, or no, 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 that he said that it was he wasn't talking about FI. He was just talking about the tertiary function and a type can be really true um, strongly. Yeah, you can get a loop. You just, that, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing that people in the MBTI community have, have talked about. You get a loop between, because they're the same vertness, the lead function and the tertiary function and because uh, because pretty much all the feeling in an INTJ is based around it's their subjective feelings what they think is right and it's the flip side of the of the FE break where it's like I don't care if the world's against me I'm gonna do what I feel is right you're right exactly <laughs> right so what we got so uh, what else have we got here externalities indicates that this functional circuit is directed outward on society uh, so it's like the things that are within their social mission so the social mission of the what, what is it, it calls it the critic I mean you are the critic Haley when it comes to like in the fitness I mean, yeah. I mean if, if, I mean, if you were a media personality you would be described as Haley Harver Critic of, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Standardized, conventional fitness yeah. doctrine. You, you yeah, would be, absolutely. Yeah. So you you would like fit that role of like taking on the convention, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And so, and if folks, people see Haley's channel, she is now, and she's on another channel where she's going into the in depth and she she surprised me with her skills whether the drawing skills she did these funny drawings <laughs> i was thinking where did that it come took a from? lot of work where did that come right. from with the voiceover and all that and the funny expression <laughs> on the face right <laughs> there you go um and a then, lot of practice an uh, externalities group takes precedence uh whenever so this is one of the some of the theory aspects from dr g so this is the most complex part of Model G. Uh, the externalities group takes precedence whenever society is involved. Therefore, we placed it above internalities because when it comes to survival and development, Socion is of greater importance than a single type. Now, he grew up in the Soviet Union and he lives in Ukraine and Ukraine is in the middle of a civil war. There's a lot of extroverted sensing and a lot of, a lot of corruption in the Ukraine at the moment so he so and i'm an intp as well like victor so he really feels the stress the extroverted sensor in um ukraine so this idea of the socion is a great important i don't really know what that means <laughs> i have an idea but we could have a whole hangout on what that bullet point means but um i think it is that this idea of when you first meet an INTJ, you sort of see their sort of like social mission, which is as the critic, which would be NI and TI. So it's like you see their the NI long range objectives and things, and then the TI, you know, logic, finding out, finding the holes in things and things like acting like Kurt Avon in Blade 7. Uh, indicated by down arrows, top functions suppress lower functions. But on its territory, the bottom functions are free from the control of the upper functions. Analogy, ride a horse. So when Haley is more on her territory, more in her comfort zone, you'll see more of her 
TE side more of a SE side. So, for example, when Haley is talking, is on her comfort zone talking about fitness, she will give you the TE. Boom, 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 boom. Facts and figures, objective logic. You know, it's all, it's all gonna, it's all gonna, it's all gonna come out. What else would we have? And also uh, some extroverted sensing as well. But maybe that's a, that's reserved for a few in, few individuals will see the extroverted sensor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's bad because I, like driving, I hate to say speeding, but it's Ooh. not even racing. But I love to you know get in a car and drive. But it's really bad because I find that. I'll get lost in here and I'll be down the road and I won't even remember passing all this stuff. So it's almost like I go, like I'll start thinking about, you know, something that happened or something that's going to happen or how I'm going to do this or that, or I just, I'm thinking about something and then it's really dangerous to do while I'm driving. And I just, it's like, I want to do that while I'm driving though. I mean, obviously I don't because I know it's dangerous, but it, it's crazy how it works like that. Like when I'm in the gym or whenever I, um, like when I was younger, if I had to, you know, run in gym class or something, I would just become lost in here. Yeah. And what she's saying there, folks, absolutely matches something in NLP called uptime and downtime, where downtime is like the person is like internally focused and it can even be dreams and stuff and like a translate state. And up time is being totally focused on the outside world. And so that's like one half of NI, NI versus SE, uh, SE being objective sensor. And then also we have the other half of NI from NLP, which is through time. NIC is changed through time. And then the other half is in time, which is more static. It's like, okay, what is happening now? And so you can, so with NI people, with them being downtime, internally focused, and then also being focused on how things change through times, they're not as well focused on the present moment. So that is why your INTJ probably won't make the best car driver, racing driver. But, right, yeah, that's me. But an SP probably would because they are hyper stimulated in the mo and for instance Haley and I have been watching Battlestar Galactica I think it's fair to say that that Saul Tai is an SE Dom he needs his external stimulation you know and if he's not stimulated he, he, he always needs something whether it's a crisis or alcohol mm -hmm. right then. so uh, so we so the internet is uh, we'll, we'll talk about internet, but, but again, internet is on its range at close psychological distance. Functions in this row are called internet is, which means that they are aimed at its territory. Uh, and then it's like when working externally, internalization is suppressed and muted by the vertical supervision, one way inhibition ties. So for example, folks, I'm on my territory at the moment. So I come across as expressive. You can probably see an INT when you see some INTJs, but when they are on their territory, they'll show more extroverted sensing, maybe take more risks, you know, those kind of uh, behaviors. Maybe the wild side will come out. All right, here we go. So, energy uh, endowed. Right, here's an interesting idea. Endowed, so, it's actually maximum energy, and it, an interesting contrast with optimum energy. So, more than optimum. So it's almost as if people indulge their dominant functions. Oh, never. I've never seen anyone indulge their dominant function. I've never seen an INFP do too much FI or an INTP do too much TI. <laughs> or, an, or an INTJ do too much NI. Uh, endowed with excess capacity, it consumes the lion's shares of the psyche's energy. The more powerful the first function, the more distance the communicative field covers. So, for instance, there are just some people where their dominant function is just so noticeable. Right, from like a, a long distance away. It's like, whoa, that's a lot of extroverted sensing. Or you probably felt, whoa, that's a lot of FE. Get it away from me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right. And then here's another thing. 
social mission block, the idea that these two functions work together, and uh, and but this now people are probably thinking, ah, never. Uh, okay, you, you've got to think, folks, about. Oh, I've got to make a slight digression in order to prove this because this is a. Uh, actually, I won't because I'll do that in the next one when we talk about the creative function because we're talking about the management function. So this is the same as so Victor in Model G. It is government of the psyche in charge of setting goals and making decisions. So, for instance, in Haley's case, it's the long range plans the long-range planning of the NTJs that Kersey wrote about. Uh, government and site paired with a manipulative function. So it's like paired with the extroverted sensor. So it's like the NI DOMs have the plan, but they need the energy, they need the extroverted sensing, usually from somebody else to like, like give them the, like say, hey, look, just do it. And like drag them, give them the willpower. So I drag them along sometimes and Haley's talked about in other videos about being in inhibited because it is yeah. NI, it's ni minus it's like oh no all the things that can go wrong go wrong mm -hmm. so equivalent in young mbti dominant function equivalent in tote model it's a test phase now i don't really know how true that is i think victor sort of made a rough comparison there almost to go like well the tote model has four phases my model can have four phases Something like that. But uh, Dario Nardi, uh, what he's shown with these types, and people are probably thinking, yeah, but how do you know there was no... He was very careful in how he got at the types of the people that he analysed. He did lots of different angles and stuff, and he was like pretty sure of their types. And he only did right-handers, because, you know, left-handers can be odd. <laughs> but he's recently started to EEG left-handers. Uh, Dario Nardi, and he found out that uh, half of left-handers are have the the mirror image of right-handers, right-handers in their brain activity. The other fifty percent is just all over the place with unique brains. Uh, right, high Dario Nardi, high EEG activity in regions correlated with Jungian functions in this position. Uh, also related to function-specific macro states. So, uh, and what I've noticed is that um, the perceiving functions tend to be delocalized. Uh, the judging functions tend to be localized. So there tends to be an area for FI, for FE, for TE, for TI, but not for the uh, judging, not for the perceiving functions. Apart from the fact that the sensory introverts, all the types with I and S in the four letter code tends to have a lot of activity at the back of the brain because the back of the brain is associated is the occipital lobe associated with the visual cortex right so i'll do a little bit on the tote model and then i'll get back to and then i'll do the ni the ni bullet points oh that's 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 not jeff that is balzac right that is balzac and I will now go over to, oh, I've got, uh, what, what am I looking at now? Oh yeah, some of the definitions that Victor has used. The one he used for NI, T, 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 intuition of time. A function that manifests in contemplative wait and see behavior. I'll ask Haley, do you think that fits you? <laughs> no, just a bit. <laughs> Right, right, and uh, um, what have I got to do? The, uh, I'll do the tote model a little bit. I won't spend too much on that because what I'll do is, because people can see that themselves, and I've shown Haley this before. So, but you can see there, folks, that this is a system of basically where someone is adaptable, where they try an action, it doesn't work, they assess the situation, and they think, right, I better try something else. But there is a certain, there are situations where you do need to do the same thing again. You just need to be persistent. But then there's also situations where it's like Peter Schiff would say, that's the definite, doing the same thing again insanity. and again. Right. Is the definition of insanity. 
doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. But then sometimes, but then at other times, it's like there could be some, things affecting it. Yeah, yeah, like when you're trying to do something. Yeah, you, so you have to consider all the outside factors that are possibly affecting whatever you're doing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you got to, you, you got to, and that's where the judgment calls come in, where it's like, do you persist in the same way? Right. Or do you try something different? And you've talked about it with people in the gym trying different routines, where mm -hmm. those people that give up, they might take the view of, because I've not got all the information, of, with no point banging my head against the wall, this is the definition of insanity, I better either stop or try something else. And, and, and quite a lot of the time, you, I think you're saying that, look, folks, you've got to stick with it. You've got to push your head. Well, there is, that's, that's kind of a hard example to give yeah. because in, in that case, there's so many factors that could affect one progresses. I mean, knowing what to do is just a whole spectrum in itself. Uh, you know, eating right, their genetics. I mean, there are so many factors. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. I mean, the more people look into it, the more complex things get. But as you know, when people first look at a subject, or they get to a point where a subject appears confusing, or it, and then they think they know all, know it all, and then they see like the nuances, and then it gets more complex again. But it depends on the yeah on the subject. Uh, right. I'll mention a little bit because. I'll mention a little bit about the tote model. No, not the tote model. Static and dynamic. Oh, I'll, I'll put the camera on Haley while I talk about this, and then you can see her reaction to these points. So, uh, uh, one of the things is. Well, Ben, my screen has frozen. I'm still on the uh, present state test. Right. That, well, oh, there we go. You got me now. I, I, I am now in here twice, but. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, I'll just say a little bit about this, and then we can get on the bullet points. And that is something I've been thinking about with the JP, because I've got it. I've got it written on here, so I'm glad I remembered to. Uh, there it is, folks. I'm glad I remembered to say it, and I'll say it now. And that is um, this idea that so in socionics. Haley is, or her type, ally is a perceiving type because the dominant function is a perceiving function. And it's like when that contemplative wait and see behavior is like a perceiving function, it's perception of time, how things will change. But it's very hard to see that. But in terms of external behavior, Haley's behavior will be very judgy. So it's like the external organization and uh, timekeeping, schedule keeping, all that kind of stuff will be where people will go, well, that's pretty similar to ENTJ, a judger. So shouldn't that type also, so shouldn't NITX also be a judger? But if you're looking at those things, external organization. But internally, uh, and you've, t you've talked before about be being a moody so-and-so. So uh, dynamic, <laughs> dynamic internally. Yeah. And so, but also I've thought that the reason why introverts, introverted judges, why, okay, I'll put it differently. NI and SI DOMs will behave like J's in, term of their, in terms of their external organization is that I think that that is because their mood, because they are dynamic types, I think NI and SI, tom, SI DOMs are affected by their surroundings, just such as mess and bad decor and ghastly clothes. <laughs> and so that's why I think they behave in a judgy way, because, because their mood is dynamic. And in socionics, NI and SI DOMs are dynamic. Whereas I believe that the static types, so for instance, any DOMs and SE DOMs, their mood isn't affected by their surroundings. So they would be surrounded by a load of mess. So it's like you, you or especially an SI DOM, like come into a, a place where an, where an EP is living 
and they might go how can you live like this surrounded by all this mess and it would like it would drive them up the wall and i'm wondering i can ask you about this Haley. how does mess and disorder affect you um yeah i'm usually not very happy with it except the only times that i find that i put up with it is when i'm stressed out or if i'm rushing to do something but yeah this morning i couldn't even do my hair until i had made the bed i mean i i just i couldn't do it the room was right there and i was like i know the bed's not made just effing make the bed so you don't have to think about it anymore but yeah it will definitely affect me um however there is a point um like i said if i'm stressed or if i have something to do like i have to do it now uh like when i was in uh, college and i would have a project or something i needed to do that day i would just clean the table or the area that i was going to be working in i couldn't work like if the table but you know if, if my room or my bed wasn't made i would just leave it like that you know because i had stuff to do but um that's where it draws a line like if I'm stressed out or if I have have something I have to do but so other so, than that yeah so definitely we can say that that is a point of that explains folks why the external behavior is judgy for the for the IJs and MBTI it's because internally they are they are affected by their surroundings it affects their mood um now in terms of mental organization the 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 ips in mbti they i mean i and i and infp knows exactly how they feel about stuff <laughs> like fixed principles and like intps can get fixed in their theories and so it's like they're kind of static and they're not as affected by stuff around them um Right, so what do I do now? Let's go to the bullet points. I will click on okay. square and then go to... Uh, oh, oh, I have to do some stuff. I have to click on the green chair screen. Uh, and we'll show the tote model. I've got to make sure that I'm... Okay, I'm on me. And then I'm going to... Now we're going to go to the, the best bit of the Hangout. Uh, the bit you've been waiting for. I think is that the right one it should be now this was the first one we did with dario where we went over the, mo the simple model g dario calls that the sixth function and, and so now we're going to do the bullet points and we have some so we'll do some definitions and then i'll ask Kaylee. that's right here we go right um oh yes so ni minus for INTJ, uh, NITX. Uh, so the intuition of the past. Uh, thinking of the past, remembering past errors, trying to prevent them from happening again, extrapolating, looking for signs of the past repeating itself. That's how ILI, NITX operate. Intuition of the future. Wondering about the future, believing in a good outcome, being hopeful, holding the vision, bringing future into present, that's how NI plus of II, NIFX, INFJ works. The plus sign indicates maximizing positive manifestations of the function. The minus sign indicates minimizing the negative. The sign tells us the baseline state of the function from which it will deviate from time to time. But after a while, it always goes back to normal. And something that Maria has told me is that the stronger a function is, the more a person has access to both sides of it, both charges of it. So, for example, ESTJ uh, is normally TE minus, so it's more of a negativist uh, TE business logic, but they can also be TE positivist as well and take some business risks, but just in a more conservative way. Uh, you know, and start something like Walmart you know, something that's logistics. And they know it will work. If they do everything right, then the business will work rather than taking something that is a strategic risk. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I can ask Haley there about that. You could just go over those definitions of NI. Which one sort of rings more true to you for you? Um, 
<laughs> Minimizing the negative. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. This, when you were reading the intuition of the future, wondering about the future, believing in a good outcome, being hopeful. I mean, I, I have almost trained myself to try and be more hopeful because I feel like I get so caught in these, like, possible ways it can fail that I almost convince myself that one of those ways is going to fail. But then I have to be like, stop being such a cynical bee. You know, it just, you know, just have some hope. Yeah. I almost have to put myself into that mindset, you know, to stop being so negative about it. I mean, it's good to think about the ways it can fail, of course, but it just cannot be so good if you get caught in that mindset. So here we go. A cheeky question for you, Haley. Does the nice modern art behind you put you in a nicer mood? Um, I don't really notice it a lot of the time. Yeah, you probably get used to it. There's some good stuff there. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's not necessarily mine. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks great. It looks great, but honestly, I don't. I guess I've always kind of been that way. I'll be in a room, like if I go into someone's house and I, say I go in there every day for a year, I might notice their books on the bookshelf that have been there for the last six months. And I mean, I, I just, I don't pick things up a lot. Like I'll be staring at something and I'll notice a detail about it, but it's been sitting there for a year. Yeah. So, I mean, I like the fact that it's neat in here, but as far as noticing every little thing, I, that's where I can, uh, yeah. Yep. So now we have, let's make sure that everyone can see this. So, yes, we're on the bullet points. And so people even on their mobile phones, I'll even, I'll try and get rid of the, uh, that thing off the bottom as well. So make it as large as possible for people. So number one for Haley, and I'll just read it out for folks if, Says they can't say it. has an eye for detail, is good at noticing contradictions and omissions. <laughs> I'm the best at noticing contradictions. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, she does that in reviews. Like when we're watching things, we're watching it, she like stops it and she goes, Now, Ben, hang on a minute. Like, duh, 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 duh. like when we're watching some science fiction <laughs> thing, and it's like she's like picking, pointing out things I haven't thought about, and I take pride in noticing contradictions and things <laughs> I just think it's fun yes INTJs love that yes the critic <laughs> <laughs> but that is also something that I INTPs do as well but it's like but it's like it, as I suppose it, it, they'll notice different things um here we go um how about yes skate skeptical of hasty initiatives <laughs> yes and why because if you run off and do something too fast then you probably haven't thought about all the ways it can fail right so uh, just a little digression folks because we do have time and that is because uh, there's something that uh, Kersey mentioned it's sort of like if you want this in more solid form folks about NI if you want to get a better handle of this then look at this example here, and I think Alien High, Alien High, Alien High have maybe hmm. looked at this. I'm not sure, but if you want an example of what it looks like in terms of concrete actions, and I know this INTJ is maybe a little bit of a, maybe a TE subtype, but if we have a look at this, but certainly this is an example of Kersey showing what does NI look like with TE. It's thinking about serial order, the sequences of things, how things can go wrong. So, for instance, when he's talking there about the invasion of Europe, it's like lots of, and, and they did plan ahead for things going wrong. But, and they had a lot of luck, but also a lot of things went wrong. So, for instance, the sea, the English Channel was very calm. When all those little boats that went across with the American and British soldiers and the Canadian soldiers, and a, and a lot of them sank because of the way and like all the things and like trying to think of all the things that can go wrong um, and anyone is involved in World War two and then he, and so for instance 
serial order and then he contrasts that with the NTPs that are about things happening simultaneously more parallel thinking now also though but what I would say though Haley, through the thing that she is interested in has been doing a hell of a lot of this organization stuff because it is like complex systems and things operating in parallel, isn't it? With the yeah, with the hypertrophy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's so much overlap. Yeah. Uh, and so I did a little diagram here that uh, so the NTPs are usually thinking laterally, simultaneously going on. Like for instance, I saw that and I switched to this diagram. And then and the NTJs are more on point, more linear. And so, so coordinators do the work of what might be called arranging. Arranging is the art of determining various levels. Of, that's for that NTJ, ENTJs. And then consecutive steps, sequence, series, succession are required to achieve long range objectives. So is that something you think about a lot there, Haley? That purple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that purple stuff. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're always thinking about where you'll be with your business and stuff in like five years, ten years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine um, someone who wouldn't. I mean, especially if it's your business or something big like that. I mean, I, I mean I'm serious. I can't imagine someone starting a business and not thinking ahead to five years right. or ten years of what might happen. And, and that is an example of the social field of once you do something that if it, it was it was a question about when they asked the, they asked the prime minister about what was the biggest thing biggest advice or the biggest factor he said events dear boy events it's like there's things that can happen in your social field that force you to act and think differently where like i said like even a type that doesn't have a preference for thinking ahead if they're going into a business they're going to have to Mm -hmm. Or they'll fail. Um, yeah. So, and lots of businesses do fail. Uh, so, creative destruction. So, and now I need to go back to the bullet points. There's an INTJ. That's Rona Plant. And this is Rona Plant in a hangout talking about how the Gamma Quadra, your Quadra Haley, and his, does not value SI, does not value comfort sensor. So, there he is. <laughs> Not valuing comfort. <laughs> hey, look, here's my blanket, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not valuing comfort. Doesn't value comfort there. Right. Okay. okay. So I think that's the wrong one. Yes, that's the explanation. I need to go to this one. Back to the bullet points. Because we have about 13 minutes left. Haley has me up against the clock. Another NIJ. <laughs> right, uh, right. Here we go. Can you see the diagram at the moment, Haley? Yes, I can. Excellent. Just, uh, right. Okay. Uh, let's go through the number three. Very careful. Very careful. Is capable of waiting for the right moment to act. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, three is building off number two. Yeah. Probably. I just organised them in terms of like it's a sentence. It gets its own numbered bullet point gotcha. just to make, right. so describe number four well you know what intjs are like i mean what about that guy <laughs> who did that video i love that guy that black guy the black guy who was the lifter <laughs> he was like so intj in his comments i should actually link that i should link that at the end of the video that black guy where he's talking about um and people were saying that the guy should show more expression. To me, he was expressive. He was just very expressive in an INTJ way. To me, he was expressive because he like held nothing back and said exactly what he was feeling. It wasn't like he was hiding behind a facade. So to me, he was expressive. He just wasn't big with his facial expressions. And it was Haley that sent me a link to that guy. And so, yeah, I mean, usually, yeah. usually INTJs are sarcastic. It's part of the INTJ humor. <laughs> you know right. what you said about uh, the, like the being expressive, the INTJ being expressive because they're they're. Oh, 
about you said. it. And then when they start doing that, um, like for example, my one of my videos I have up, um, that the one of me in the bikini where I'm just fucking going off, and then everyone's like, "Oh, you're an ENFJ." <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I because uh, that there's FE, right? Okay. No, it's it's context, folks. If you model, you are more likely to post a video in a bikini because you model. That's the thing. That's what the model does. You're more likely to do it. <laughs> Especially if you're working so hard on your body anyway. Oh, let's work really hard on your body and then not show it off. Well, you know, the main reason I wore that in the video was because, I mean, not that I should have expected to get across to anyone anyway, because fucking idiots. But, you know, to say, like, hey, any type can do fucking anything they want. I mean, this whole thing yeah. about, oh, well, this type doesn't do this, and this type only does this, or it drives me fucking crazy. I'm sorry to cuss. Yeah. It's just that it's, it's usually the types are usually better at certain things. So, for instance, usually right. ESFPs make the best actors and actresses. Usually ESTPs make the best fighter pilots and things like that. Or mm -hmm. you, you, usually INTPs don't make the best <laughs> bouncers or doormen or things like that. <laughs> or or you, usually ESTPs don't make the best, like, poets. <laughs> um, but Churchill wrote a good speech. Now, uh, okay, here we go. Number five. As a, con as a philosophical and contemplative outlook on life, Makes generalizations based on observations. I don't know how true that is. I don't know how true that is of you. What do, what do you think of that, Hayley? Um, well, I mean, what does he mean by a contemplative outlook on life? Well, remember we said before, you know when we talked about SNI here, manifesting contemplative wait and see behavior. Okay. So it's, as far as, I don't know, it's just the wording there, a contemplative yeah. outlook. I mean, I'm, I am often contemplative, but I don't know if my outlook on life would be considered contemplative. I mean, yes, in a sense, but I just, I, I don't know if I would keep the words like that. That's all. But yes, overall, I guess, yeah. yeah that's what Haley does in these videos. She like shows that thing, like the number one there, folks. She's using number one on number five. <laughs> Great. <laughs> It's like when we're doing hangouts and when we're doing the Beatrice Chestnut number five and she's got, eh, maybe the wording could be improved there. <laughs> no, I will say that I don't necessarily agree with number six. Patiently yeah. guides others, preparing them for the next step. I mean, I'm, it's not that I don't want to help people, but I don't necessarily go out of my way to other people. Yeah, but what, 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 it depends what role you've been in. I mean, say if you're in the role of... Yeah, well, yes, of course, of course, of course. But, I mean, with someone, I mean, as a general rule... Yeah. But, yeah, someone I, I care about, of course. Yeah. I don't know if I would u use that to... Yeah. So maybe it's a case of... If you were to guide someone, you would do it patiently rather than... Oh, yeah, of course. Be because... So, yeah, that might might, might depend. Uh, and then here we go, number... Oh, right, and of course, number seven. Act strategically on the basis of long-term goals. Mm-hmm, yeah, definitely. INTJ being the most strategic of the types. Hmm... Number eight. Yeah, number yeah, eight on. has definitely helped me um, since all three um, mechanisms of hypertrophy are largely interrelated. I have to remember what is associated with what and what, like, um, like how the pathways are just um, so interrelated. Yeah, this one for me is a little was a little bit of a, a tricky sticking point with where I was thinking about is this really how much of this is true for because I would think that that's also something very strong in INTP because they are looking at well maybe they should have yeah. put 
or he should have put on the end of the sentence because we're talking about um, INTJs and not INTPs, has good memory, capable of remembering large amounts of associated information if they care about it. <laughs> yes. Whereas uh, the INTP might just be like, you know, remembering information just because they're interested in acquiring knowledge. Yeah. And I, I once did, someone did a spoof of my head when I was about 11, where inside was a tiny brain. <laughs> And it was an aerial for picking up useful information. <laughs> you, no, no, they put useless information. <laughs> oh. oh, children can be cruel. Um, right. <laughs> right, what do we, we have about five minutes left and we have, um, oh yeah, let's see what Dario has got for the NI. Uh, an, a, a region that is active. So that's a coat for, I did consider buying this because I thought about all the things I could put in those pockets because NTP's possibilities. Uh, oh yes, this is important. This is what Carol Linden, and, I, and she said that she would let, and she said I could quote her. When I asked her about types and patterns, and I think it might be better to, to say patterns rather than types. So uh, I'll let you read that and comment on it. Yeah, I agree. People are too complex and their developed cells are too important for anyone to fit into a box. <clears throat> of course she is like, of course she is. It's never meant about labeling. Yeah, and of course she is an ENFP and ENFPs say that sort of thing. <laughs> right. Um, oh yes, something about that. Uh, we'll do that in future. But that's Kretschmer uh, talking about not really valuing the TI and why using the TI. We'll talk about that in future when we have more time. Oh yeah, inside the brain. We've done a video on this inside the brain of the INTJ. Uh, Oh, yeah, here's something that Jesse Ensley wrote. I don't know if you relate to that, Haley. Oh, no, 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 that was, that was Jesse, who do, has, does videos about Asperger's on her channel. But I like this one. I am more comfortable alone than I am walking on eggshells. Yeah, I agree. And then this one, uh, comparing INTJ and INTP, I think they got the, the qualities contrasted there. Enjoy elegant theories and models for their own sake. Whereas INTJ is, no, no, it has to fit a purpose. Such as making their Yeah, that reminds bigger. me of, um, <laughs> 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 that reminds me of what I messaged you about when I was reading the E5 profile. It said yeah. that like all E5s mm -hmm. are only uh, interested in acquiring knowledge and it doesn't have to be for a purpose. It just it's just for the hell of it. Right. Uh, Which I think can describe an INTP E5, but I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something. What else? There's, there's something. Yeah, just the brain. Just want to show the, the people the brain about there's an area of the brain that's active with NI and talking about the future. And uh, so those are Dario's books. Uh, Dario, the way he defines NI, this is from his research. Uh, uh, enter a very brief chance to answer problems, focus on what will happen, use the whole brain to see the future, manage their own mental processes as they are aware. That may over rely on the unconscious if they're a bit weird. <laughs> That's, okay. like, that, that's a lot of NI. When people, are, that's those people who are interested in symbols and stuff, right? So Sounds uh, more NFE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Dario has gone NFE lately. Um, <laughs> right. What have we got here? NI. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see if you agree with this. I, I don't know about the, 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 the. I mean, like Dario, his like he like. Metapers like the idea that NI is the best function. I think Dario thinks that is the most highly evolved function. Isn't he hot for SE though? He's hot for SE, but he's hot for all the functions in his quadra. 
N A N I T S E N F I. Okay. Well, yeah, I'd agree with this, but I mean, to the same extent that I agree with, you know, thinking about the future and what's going to happen, and you know. And then there's a region T T T T six T six behind the right ear. Uh, and Dario talked about how difference between SJs and NJs is that SJs think about the future, but it's like they think about a, a, only a few possibilities, and they think the future is being going to be very much like the now, because SJs like things being the same. They like things being organized, mm -hmm. stability, stabilizers, as Linda Bones calls that temperament. And so, mm -hmm. and so what he noticed in the SJs is they can have quite a bit of activity in region T6. What the NJs have is they also have activity in region P4. So they look at more possibilities of how things can go in the future. Uh, oh yes, and there was something else that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and that is that in, 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 so people don't exist on an island they exist in a social context and so for example uh, and, I, and I've talked about talked to Haley and and, it, and it, that is that if you think about INTJs and ENTJs in business I'm an Austrian, I, uh, Austrian school, and I so I'm very much to me. It's like we're obsessed by interest rates and how important interest rates are. And interest rates are very important to anyone in business. Now, interest rates, the whole definition of the whole justification for interest rates was called time theory preference of credit. And so what that means is that that the lower interest rates are. The more you can borrow and the more time you have to pay it back so what that will do is that will encourage people to take out larger loans for riskier projects that go more into the future because mm -hmm. of the time, because of because of the time preference if the interest rate was higher the person contemplating the business would think hang on a minute it's going to take me ages enough to get you know to get to the break-even point where I can pay or where I can start paying back the loan because I've got to make so much investment in this project. So it's like, so the interest rate environment can monkey around with the NTJ's intuition of time. So that's how I'm saying that you can have NTJ's that are in the stock market right now who think they know stuff, who are buying these crazy stocks like Blue Apron. And it's like they've got this huge valuation. All they do, Blue Apron, Haley, is they will send you a recipe and ingredients so that you can make it yourself. Whereas you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, I could just look up the recipe online and buy the ingredients myself. And that company, yeah. Blue Apron, has like a huge valuation on it. And I'm like, this same thing happened in the 1990s with these companies but, and it's like with Amazon. Amazon doesn't make any profit, and yet he has this huge valuation. Doesn't make any profit. It, because that's why they're so, and that's why the prices are so low, because they, they, they just want market share. And it's the potential, and people are thinking about, oh, what they could do in future. Mm -hmm. And so it monkeys around with the intuition of time, where it's like, money is cheap, and borrow a load of money all these things all these possibilities in the future whereas when it's more expensive to borrow money it's sort of like you will probably make the ntjs think hang on a minute don't be silly <laughs> it's, and i'm just and I, that's an example of how interest rates can affect the uh, the ntj's magical superpower of uh of intuition and time with business they think they can predict mm -hmm. things going in, into the future, whereas, you know, you want to predict Well, things. I can also yeah. predict 20 minutes into the future, and if we don't end this soon, I'm not going to have enough time to get done what I need to get done. 
So I'm sorry, Mr. Ben, to cut you off. Oh, yeah, we, look, <laughs> we, are, we are going to finish now, folks, because we are ended on that positive note. I'll press, uh, <laughs> I'll press stop. So you NTJs, don't get too chalky, don't too too cocky. <laughs> Peter Schiff will set you right, and Ludwig von Mises, who was an INTJ as well. So, you know, learn from an INTJ. So, bye-bye, folks. <laughs> Hope you like this now. <laughs>